All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really nice to be here. It's nice to see a lot of uh, familiar uh, faces here. So uh, I'm Gabby from Altitude Games, and uh, I'll give a little bit of background before we go into the talk itself. So uh, Altitude Games has been around since 2014. We started the first three years of our lives making mobile free-to-play games, but I've been in the game industry for 16 years. Uh, it, two years ago, we started researching on Ethereum and smart contracts and thought it really interesting. And we were deep in that research when CryptoKitties hit in around November of 2017. And that was our moment where we knew that we had to do this full time. So we've been uh, researching on NFTs and, uh, and blockchain games since then. And I'm here to tell you more about our first blockchain game, Battle Racers. Okay, so Battle Racers is the first blockchain game that we've developed that we are launching uh, around a month from now. It's in beta right now. And it's a blockchain game where you can build and race pretty much toy cars, uh, NFTs on the blockchain. So your car is made up of four parts, front, back, wheels, uh, body, and then you combine them into a token that you can race multiplayer against other people in real time. Okay, so uh, as I said, it's a launch title on the Decentral world. So when Decentral launches around uh, uh, very near, around a month or so from now, will be one of the first uh, games that you can play there. Uh, we, we just did a highly successful item sale, which is, the, I guess, the subject of my whole talk today, and I'll tell you more about that. And we did a, an event, a crossover event, with our friends at Axie Infinity. So we had Axie Infinity themed crates that sold out in seven seconds. Okay, so uh, let's go on to basics. Let's define it. What is an item sale? So uh, game developers usually do an item sale to crowdfund, uh, campaign to raise funds by selling game assets. So as opposed to selling tokens, you're selling NFTs or assets in your game. The issued assets are uh, usually in the form of non-fungible tokens. So in Ethereum, that's usually ERC721. It doesn't refer to an ICO or a token sale. It doesn't refer to trading between players, such as marketplace. So think of it as uh, very similar to a Kickstarter campaign. In a Kickstarter campaign, uh, some, a developer tells you what the game is about. Uh, they say they're going to raise this, and then people try to raise money on it. It's very similar in an item sale, except that you're issuing assets. So your players already own items in your game, usually before the game is released. And what it does is that, apart from pledging to your game, they actually own your assets already, which, uh, which breeds a closer form of a uh, community and ownership because they already own the items that uh, in, inside your game. So the, there are different goals for, uh, for an item sale. Of course, the number one goal is to raise funds, but it's also a lot about marketing and uh, a really good item sale raises a lot of hype and build community with people who have skin in the game. Okay, so uh, I'll run down the, the stats from the Battle Racers item sale. So we did this from um, May to June, so it ended there on June 20th last, uh, last month. So we sold almost 600 Ether worth of items in the pre-sale. Average spend was around 2.6 Ether uh, across 228 wallets, but the 2.8 is, 2.6 is actually a little bit misleading because you have the highest buyer at 39 Ether, which is around, uh, around $10,000. And our top 10 wallets actually uh, contributed 50% of item sale. So you see this a lot in blockchain games where the whales make up a disproportionate amount uh, of, of the ether that the, you're going to raise for your game. And it also influences how you design your game and your tokenomics accordingly. Okay, so uh, we see here some of the most successful item sales this year. This is not a complete list by any means, but you can see just the magnitude of uh, what item sales have done in the year. So uh, from, from asking around with our friends, Axie Infinity leads uh, the item sales this year with almost 4,000 Ether raised. And the reason they did this was uh, Axie Infinity already had a live game and a really strong community by the time they, they did their land sale. So when the land sale came, they already had people who were uh, ready buyers. It also changed the way their game was played, uh, going from breeding and battling to having a land component. So it also attracted a new class of users for the game. And it was very, very successful. I took part in that pre-sale and I actually stole a lot of the things they did there for our own. Okay, so Cheese Wizards is uh, from the team that did CryptoKitty, so they also did really well with over a thousand Ether. Uh, Neon District did very well. I also bought some items there, and they did uh, just a little over 700 Ether. And there we are with, with around 600. So you can hear about uh, there are lots of uh, item sales that may not do as well. They're, they may raise just a few thousand dollars. And if you are someone planning to do or doing an item sale, I hope the, the things we discuss here will help you. 
Okay, elements of success. We always start in uh, blockchain, number one is community. It's the first thing you need to do. Of course, you're going to make your game, but for any blockchain game to be a success, you have to build your community and you need to build it very early. Uh, the, any blockchain game will not succeed without the strength of its community. And the way that uh, we were thinking about is that it's very, very hard to create a community that cares about your game from scratch. So we leverage existing communities, not in a predatory way, it's actually a two-way uh, two between the communities that we have, but we, we leverage these existing communities to care about their game. And for us, uh, those two communities were Decentraland, where we were deploying our game on, and Axie Infinity, because I was one of probably one of the most uh, engaged players of the game, and people knew me in that game personally. So whatever, uh, Whatever game, whatever communities form the base of your game will really vary on your background and what you've done before. But whatever you do, don't launch your item sale uh, with zero community on hand. Build that community, nurture it, delay your sale if you must. And when you have this community, they're going to back you and they will make you successful. Okay, so you really have to think about the item sale mechanics. You can build a really good community, it can be really popular, but if your sale mechanics are wrong, it will really hamper the amount of money you will raise in the game. So usually, uh, direct asset sale is probably the worst way to make money. And why is that? Uh, it's because if people know exactly what they want and they buy it, that means they're content with just buying maybe one thing and then they'll stop buying. So if you do that, you'll actually really hamper the amount of money you raise in the game. And this is why you see in, uh, in most, of, most of the cases, uh, people do some form of loot box or, or gacha box. And the nice thing about blockchain is that you can do this in a more transparent way. You can publish all of the odds and say that you know, th these are the odds of getting different scarcities for, uh, for the game. And uh, our items also have different scarcity tiers, so this is very common in uh, loot box design where you have a common, rare, epic, legendary item. Most of the people that buy a lot are usually hunting for the rarest type of item. So you have to enable this behavior and uh, have them buy a lot so that they can uh, obtain these rarest items. Uh, auctions are good for hero NFTs, so hero NFTs are one-off really uh, recognizable items and uh, that's good for auctions. So for example, uh, Boss from Neon District was auctioned off for 141 Ether and uh, 111 from uh, Formula 1 was auctioned off for an ungodly sum of money. How is that? Like over $100,000, right? Yeah, 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 400, 460 ETH. So, uh, so that was very successful, but it's very hard to do. So you, if you want to do that, you have to make sure that you have something that is, you know, highly, uh, a very prestige item uh, that someone will be willing to bid for. But uh, one thing to note about uh, these auctions is that uh, usually they're one-offs and they don't build community because there aren't a lot of people. I mean, by definition, there's only one person that's going to build that auction. So it's great for, uh, I guess, providing a lot of buzz in your game and having something that's highly desirable, but it's not, it's not going to build your greater community unless they can buy something themselves. Okay, so you have to understand uh, tokenomics and scarcity. This goes with blockchain and incentives for, uh, for earning money, and you need to have a price point that suits everyone. Just because the whales take up most of the uh, contribution for the game doesn't mean that you should design the items only for the whales. So to do this, we had different price points so that everyone would feel that they could uh, buy NFTs for uh, whatever budget they had. So as you can see here, we had different types of crates from gold to wood, with wood being 0 0.035 ether and the gold crate being 0.7 ether. So, so we had different uh, types of crates so that people who were on a very modest budget could buy the cheapest crate and we even discounted it on the first day. But the people who were hunting for scarcity and wanted to get the legendary items, uh, they usually bought the gold crate and, and silver crate. So even though most people bought wood crates uh, by far, it was actually the gold crate that had the most contribution to our sale revenue-wise. Okay, playable game demo. Um, I think your experience may vary on this, but my opinion is that by the time you do an item sale and you ask for players' money, you should have something that is already playable. Uh, some people have been able to uh, raise uh, money successfully without this, but I think it's because they built very successful community first. For us, uh, we did this by doing a beta test 
right two weeks before the item sales started and on the last week. So two weeks before the sales started, we already had built up some community through our efforts and they got to play the game before shelling out any money. So this achieves two things. One is that they know that the game is for them and they actually know that the game is fun before shelling out a single dollar, which I think is very important. And the second is that it, streng it strengthens your community so that if someone comes in and asks, you know, is this legit, is this a scam, people can actually say that, you know what, I played it, it was great, and I'm buying, and it convinces other people to buy as well. Okay, talk about marketing. There's a lot of things you can do uh, in marketing to, uh, uh, to, to promote your game. Uh, Vlad actually gave some really good pointers in the, in the last talk about community acquisition. And here are some of the things that we did. Uh, your mileage may vary, but uh, so what we did was that we announced our sale date at least 30 days before the start of sale. We published the mechanics, we had people ask questions. Uh, you don't want to surprise people that your sale is already on because usually they wanna save up, they wanna see if there's any hype. So just springing the surprise of a sale on your player base is usually a bad thing. You want to build up the anticipation. Build a history on social media. People are gonna check your Twitter, your Facebook, your Discord, they're gonna check how many users there are. And usually people treat it as some sort of proxy of whether the the, the company or the game is legit or not. So if, even if you're a legit, really experienced game developer and you build your game for two years in a black hole without providing any info, and then you suddenly go online with a sale, you're gonna meet somewhat hostile reactions from people who didn't know that you existed. Okay, create a steady stream of content. So we actually filled up a lot of content with, you know, who's the team, where do we come from, what kind of games did we do. We were building a history of uh, content so that people know that we already exist and we have this game. That's very important, again, social proof that uh, you, you can actually execute on what you're promising. Uh, give your community materials to do their own marketing. So one of the coolest things about crypto is that uh, your community can really do the marketing for you. We gave them um, materials, we published all of the info about their game, we gave them high-res images they could use, and honestly, the community did most of the community uh, of the marketing work for us. So we did a uh, we did a bounty campaign where people could receive free NFTs for helping promote the game, and yeah, people did a lot of stuff. They did articles, they did videos, fan art, tweets. Someone even made a giveaway campaign uh, for people to join our social channels, and all we had to do was reward them for it. Okay, so next is about partnerships. Partnerships are very important because uh, each partnership that you have has their own uh, network that is probably different from yours. And also they derive more social proof that your game is legit. So some of our partners here, for example, that were doing uh, marketing for us, Nifty Gateway, which we use for credit card payments for NFTs, they blogged about us. Uh, the Central and did several uh, several tweets and several articles about us. Loom Network, which we're using for our side chain, they also did some marketing around us. So each of these add a little more uh, people and more community to ours coming from their own. And mixing these communities is, I think, the best way to scale blockchain games right now. And the more communities that are interested in you, the more you can grow your game. Okay, proper advisors add value. So these are, these are the Discord handles, and I don't know how many of you live full-time in crypto game Discord, but if you don't know who Silituna and Jihos are, you're probably not really deep in the space. So we, we chose advisors that really provided a lot of value to our game. They gave value not only in giving, giving us advice on how to, uh, how to conduct our sale, but these are also people who are actually kind of well-known in the space. They gave us a very valuable intros. They helped us with our tokenomics. Uh, Jeff, in particular, of Axie, just uh, connected us with people that they use for their own land sale. So it was really, really valuable. And yeah, so Jeff is there right now looking at his own face. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, so that's the advisor and uh, yeah, so, so proper advisors give value. We don't do it for face value or just to say that these famous people are, uh, you know, are, are, in our, are advising our sale. These are people that truly believe in our project and we believe that they add value. And yeah, that's why we did it. And then uh, we like to compensate them with item NFTs that gives them skin in the game. Uh, so yeah, so the better our game does, the better that they do as well. 
Okay, so the goal for your pre-sale, and it's similar actually to a Kickstarter or any fundraising campaign, is to drive maximum FOMO on the first day. Uh, you will raise most of the money on your first day, and you will raise more money on the succeeding days based on how much money you raise on the first day. So that first day is very, very, very important. So for example, we did around 597 ETH, right? 213 of that ETH actually came from the first 24 hours. And, so, and then after the first day subsides, you have to do things to kind of keep people interested and sustain it for the duration of the sale. So for us, it was 30 days. So yeah, the first day was really crazy. There was so much excitement on Discord, and that actually bought people to, uh, got people to buy more than they originally were budgeting for. Uh, we sustained activity with uh, different events on the second, third, fourth week. So we had an Axie sale that drove more users in. Uh, we had some partnerships, and we had, uh, for the last week, uh, we, we had a promo where there was a higher chance to, reach, uh, to get legendary items. So that drove probably an additional 50 Ether on the last day. So, and one of the cool things we did was that we had a Discord bot that actually just tracked sales. So all sales uh, above 0.5 Ether showed up on a, on a channel called FOMO in Discord. And every time this lit up, people were feeling the FOMO. And some people actually end up buying more because some other people were buying. Remember, people like social proof. People like to buy because other people are buying. So you should encourage this behavior with how you do your sale. Okay, so it's so a lot of info to pack. I'll just leave with some do's and don'ts, and then you can ask questions. Do a referral link to let players earn a percentage of referral sales. This is very valuable if you do this in conjunction with a bounty campaign. Uh, next is accept credit card payments. So credit card payments are known to increase your sales by 8%. Accept as many cryptocurrencies as possible because each cryptocurrency has their own fanboys and they want utility for their cryptocurrency. So the more that you can accept, the better that you'll do. Translate your website to additional languages, which we failed to do because we ran out of time. I think we missed out on, for example, Japanese or Korean users because we, we hadn't translated it by the time that we started our sale, but this is something that we plan to do very soon. Make it easy for your whales to give you a lot of money. So I've, I'm, I've seen games where they kind of limit how, uh, how, how much people can buy at a single time to very small amounts. So if you limit it to $50, $100, then you have to click again people will actually buy less. So for us, I think the, the most they could buy at one time was around uh, just a little over 100 Ether. And uh, yeah, it, it worked out really well for us. And uh, lastly, do, do make a sales tracker to drive more FOMO. Lastly, don't do these things. Don't just uh, spring your sale on people without uh, pre-announcing it first. So it's really good that you have enough lead time so that you can get feedback from people and you can change your mechanics. So uh, when we publish our mechanics one week, uh, one month before the sale, some community members actually came to us and told us that our uh, tokenomics were wrong and they, they were driving people to buy the cheapest uh, to the cheapest crate instead of the most expensive one. So this feedback came straight from our community. We fixed it, and everyone was better off because of that. Don't start your sale without a game demo. I explained that already earlier. Do not allow secondary trading during the item sale. So I think this, is, this can be a little controversial, but here's how I see it. The item sale is the, uh, the time that you are making money directly from your players, and you use that to develop for, uh, for the game. If you mix that with secondary trading, is, secondary trading is when your players are making money by selling to other players. And if you mix that at the same time, you're actually taking money out of your own item sale. So don't do that. Give enough time f for people to buy from you. Then after, a, a little bit after that, allow them to trade between themselves. Don't make overly complicated sa sale mechanics because they'll probably kick you in the ass later on and they'll have some unforeseen uh, effects that you haven't thought uh, thought of, so just try to make it as simple as possible. And lastly, don't ignore community feedback. As I said earlier, this is all about community, and your community wants to be heard. And even though you don't do exactly what they're asking for, they want to know that they have been considered and you've thought about the right decision to do. Okay, so that's all I have, and now I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabi. We have time for one question. Yes, sir. Uh, 
um, it's more of a command about the secondary sale during your pre-sale. Uh, there are uh, examples in the industry from last year, if you remember the game ETH Town, which did allow the secondary sale and it helped them to increase uh, the hype meter a lot. Right because uh, they just approached it a little bit differently. They've earned a lot as well, but um, they've utilized the power of people driving in more users into the market because they were trying to make money as well. So right. there are two points here. As you said, it's controversial. If you do it yourself only, you uh, don't engage the traders that are able to bring their own communities, their own trading groups as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I guess there are several approaches to it. And uh, usually when you do the initial item sale, it's probably not the last one. Uh, there are games that have done, for example, a second sale within a year or more. So it also allows their uh, communities to make money. But just the way I see it is that you're getting 100% of the proceeds right, from, from the primary sale, and you're probably getting at most 5% from the secondary. But yeah, thanks for the comment. We're good? Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody.